Have you ever been sitting on the couch at home or browsing on YouTube and boom, a trailer for a new game pops up and you think, man, I wonder what everybody else thinks about this. Well, now you don't have to look anywhere else. Game Reviews is here to tell you exactly what other people, just average people in general, think about new upcoming games of our industry. I'm going to interview friends, family, YouTubers, pro gamers, whoever I can get my hands on and just talk about video games and what they enjoy about them. But without further ado, here is my first interview with the Mr. Dark Phoenix on YouTube. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Caleb Perrinet with The Bit Trip, and today I'm joined with uh, Mr. Dark Phoenix of the Mr. Dark Phoenix channel, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about his channel and why he does what he does, and uh, yeah, go ahead and say hi. Hi everybody, how you doing today? So, uh, I, I, gotta, I gotta know, you, you absolutely love comic books, right? Absolutely. What, what made you want to make a YouTube channel dedicated to comic books and their movie counterparts and everything? Well, originally when I had started my YouTube journey, I wanted to be, at first it was like a whole like camouflage of change of things. At first I wanted to be a pro gamer, and that didn't work out because uh, I like to have a social life. <laughs> right, yeah. I understand and, that. And then at first I wanted to be a video game uh, commentator, which I still do sometimes, depending on the game. And then I went into video game Let's Plays on my channel, and my computer died. My oh, first man. computer. So I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, oh, my God, I can't, like, not do any content because, you know, I have to keep up with, you know, my, uh, with, uh, my subscriber that subscribed to me. So then I started looking at other things that I loved and literally like like a slap in the face I'm looking at my at, at my comic book collection and I'm like, "Oh my god, I love comic books." And I talk to my friends about it all the time. It was, it was just like a great epiphany just staring you in the face the whole time, right? Yeah, like my comic books are just like, "Hey, stupid, we're down here." <laughs> it's like, "Yes, kids, our comic books talk to us if we let them." So uh so you, you said that uh, you know you used to do a lot of gaming stuff. Um, what what was kind of your your favorite game to play, like for a let's play? Um, oh man, um, I have to say because I covered a lot of games, and Lollipop Chainsaw was one of those games that uh, we finished that me and my friend were so excited for. We were so excited to get our hands on that game, and. I would have to say it's a kind of like a nick of Lollipop Chainsaw and Young Justice Legacy. Right. Because that was me and two of my other friends who were in this with who were with me on my channel. And we just had such absolute fun playing that game. It didn't matter that it did the the reviews didn't matter. It didn't matter that, you know, we died all the time. It just mattered that it was just three friends playing a game. And the commentary, which is priceless, because this is one level where Dark Hunter, uh, a friend of mine, is trying to instruct me and our other friend on how to get past the sniper in a level, and we kept dying repeatedly. You know, uh, one thing that I, I, I love doing, first of all, couch co-op games, they're really falling. Like, we have not had that many couch co-op games in the past few years, and the ones that we do have really are the they're, they're kind of the indie games, right? They're not really the AAA stuff. Um... But one thing that I, I absolutely love to do is, you know, get a few friends together, blindfold the guy who's playing, and then have everybody try to walk him through the level. It's just that, that's amazing. Oh, oh, oh that's a, oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, there you go. That, that's, that, that's a good challenge video. Yeah, that's that's an idea. You you can use that. There you go. How do you feel about the market kind of shifting to all online multiplayer rather than just uh, you know, hey, let's let's all game together in the same room. Um, I really do. I'm 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 really not happy about that actually because I feel like games like and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use it as an example. Games like Titanfall, right. where it's full price, but you don't have a story mode to it. I'm like you're it's a first person shooter with mechs in it. It, it that that literally is a game called Armor Core, and there's like ten of those. Yeah, like so, for instance, you have Mech Warrior Online, which is an online only multiplayer game. If you want that. Go play Mech Warrior Online, not Titanfall. Right, and I really feel that it's it's lacking where I feel like most games, because me, if I'm dropping sixty dollars for a game, granted the online possibilities are endless, and I can understand right. that that's what they want. 
And but personally, me, if because there was a time where I went like a year or two without Internet. So mm -hmm. I was very heavily on online games back in the day. I would always play Call of Duty with my friends. You know, I'm not the greatest, but I would play because it was fun with them. And we made oh, so of course, much yeah. fun. And the fact that I had no online meant that I had to go into my huge library of single player games. And yeah. now I have a found appreciation and the re-sparked love for single player games again. And I haven't played that much online because now that Call of Duty keeps coming out, we're like, oh, we'll get this. We'll get the third one that comes out and we'll get this. But I just miss the old days where a bunch of you, where you would get a bunch of your friends over, you know, you have some, you know, snacks and, you know, you have some stuff and you just sit down and chill and just talk smack about a game while you're playing it. Oh, yeah, like uh, land, land parties are a thing. I don't want to say they're a thing of the past, but you're seeing less and less of them because everybody's just like, oh, hey, let's you know sit at our house and we'll, we'll game over the internet. But uh, I, I try to make it a point at least once or, or once a week or two times a month or something like that uh, to go and have a land night with my friends or couch co-op night. And we have a blast. You know, We'll sit around for four or five hours just playing old classic games. Like, for instance, uh, uh, soon I'm going over to a buddy of mine's house and we're going to play... Mario Kart 64 and, and Goldeneye, you know, two of the greatest games on the 64 oh, that ever came out. Yeah. Those two games help ruin friendships. <laughs> they, exactly. Mario Party is the bane of all friendships' existence, as well oh, as Portal. God. I, I want to say Portal uh, 2 <laughs> co-op definitely took the cake for that. Yeah. Uh, no pun intended, with because the, the cake is a lie. So. Oh, the cake is a lie. So uh, you, you said you, you tried to do a little bit of uh, pro commentating. Do you mean like esports stuff or... Just basically when I went back and thought about what I wanted to do, I really just, you know, because for me, I'm, I I do a lot of KISS, K -I -S, which is keep it simple, stupid. I try to like, mm -hmm. and for me, commentating is not more about commentating about, you know, because obviously if you're watching, like, let's say you're watching uh, commentating on Call of Duty, right. you obviously see what's on the screen yourself. What I try to do with my commentary is I try to like, you know, make jokes or, you know, make note of smaller things because you can already see what's on the screen. So why should I say that? You know, why should I say what's on the screen? And I try and make it like, you know, like a stand-up routine, basically. Yeah, you try to make it slapstick almost. Or just yeah, definitely. Uh, make fun of the player who's playing. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that's a great way to look at it. It's keep it, keep it simple, stupid. There you go. <laughs> For those of you who don't know that are listening to this uh, or watching this, um, Manhunt was a game about, uh, basically you played as this guy, I, I, I want to say he was, uh, well there, there was two different games, I think one of them like you started out in an insane asylum, but I don't think you were insane, anyways, you were getting revenge on these, these people, and you would just kill people in horrendous ways, came out on the PS2, and you would walk around, pick up kind of whatever weapons you could find, like, uh, uh, a plastic bag. You'd walk up to somebody and basically snuff them out with uh, by choking them over the face with it, so they couldn't breathe. And then you could get a pair of like garden um, clippers, and you would stab it into somebody's neck or like shove it through their eyes. The you know, it was for the PS2 era. It was really graphic. It was really intense, and it was horrifying. And I remember I wanted to play that game just because I wasn't allowed to. Um, and that was probably the epitome of just like whenever. Mortal Kombat first came out, that hit peak of the news, you know, people were like, this is so violent, we can't have this, this has to be banned, you can never make it. Uh, and I think it was actually to the point where it, the sales of it were banned and it stopped uh, being processed. But now, five, six years later, we have games that are much worse than that. For instance, the last God of War game, you know, you could rip off somebody's face and nobody thought twice about it. But when we look back at Manhunt now, and it's like, oh, that's a joke. It's so like, it's like, oh, you think that's bad? We have way worse things. To right, and in now. five, six years, what are games going to look like then compared to now? Like violently, or uh, I'm not talking about graphically. Just uh, what what is the acceptable norm then compared to the acceptable norm now? So, and that you know, you really bring up a really good point because honestly, it just seems like. It's like it's either it gets accepted and swept under the rug or it's like it gets accepted but they still glare at it or they still like, you know, find ways to poke holes in it. Like, I don't I don't think anybody made a big stink about Grand Theft Auto V, even though I think you can pull off like heist and stuff. But it's still like the, the same thing. They chose one thing in GTA V to really complain about 
And that, well, besides the Lindsay Lohan court case, but that's a completely different subject. She just wanted to sue them because she needs money. Oh, yeah, exactly, because <laughs> she's, she's totally gone down the rabbit hole and taken a left. Um, in GTA Five, there was a, a scene, uh, I don't know if you got to play it yourself, but uh, there's a scene where uh, essentially you torture somebody. But let's just say the guy deserves it, and... Um, it's really not that gruesome of a scene. I mean, I can go turn on TV, primetime TV, you know, and... Game just of after, Thrones? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> like, also, I could turn on FX or something like that during the middle of the day and watch a torture scene and people just not even blink at it. Just be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. And, you know, there are five, six-year-old kids in the room watching it too, laughing. But you go and put it in a video game, people are like, oh my gosh, no, this can't happen. No, you got to stop that. How dare you put this in this work of fiction? Exactly. You know, it's like you can write Fifty Shades of Grey, but as soon as you try to talk about it, people are like, oh, shh, shh. Okay, so taking a big leap back, uh, I want to go back to the comic books. Um, so I got to know, what are your thoughts on the Hollywood adaptations of the comic book? Um, heroes and or villains like um, for instance Marvel it was obtained by Disney and they threw out a lot of lore stuff but they also started writing more what do you feel about the new Marvel movies well I mean um, I'm gonna answer the first question about the representation of the because I feel like the actors and how they portray them is just as important and I was just talking to a couple of friends about this where I feel like our expectations on casting is through the roof and it needs to stop yes because the gal gadot was wonder woman was that thing that really made me upset because people are like oh she's too skinny this and that and blah 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 and i'm like okay let me put everyone to shame and let me talk about this right now there is no way on this planet you are going to find what wonder woman was originally drawn as and intended to be which is a seven foot tall amazonian built bodacious right woman. There is no one in Hollywood that can pull that off. And even if Lucy Lawless said yes, she's way too old to do it. And I feel like even like with other things, like people are saying that Greg Gustin playing The Flash because he's too skinny. I'm like, okay, what really? They're drawn like that because it's fiction. When they go into the movies, I feel like the movies are a little bit more of a realistic take. Because otherwise, we would just have built people on the comic book screen. Oh, exactly. I want to touch on the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, uh, I, I take it, of course, you've probably seen it. Twice. So, oh, yeah. Okay. It's it's amazing. And I think Get it's... Going into it, I, I never read any of the Guardians of the Galaxy comics. Uh, so, I really don't know too much about the backstory. Oh, I kind of know should. a little bit of the, I, the meta. I highly recommend them. They are amazing. So, I, I know that they were written to be sort of tongue-in-cheek right uh-huh um and going into the movie i wasn't expecting uh me to come out thinking oh my god that's the best comic book movie i've ever seen in my life um and i i, I, I can't really say that probably the first iron man probably still kind of holds that for me um and you know it's funny you say that because for me when First of all, I want to go back and say that I am so proud of Marvel for even making this movie because I was reading an article on IGN one day, and it was like this one uh, contributor said that he was glad Marvel doesn't own the rights to all of their properties, like X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Spider-Man. And right. I was like, what you talking about? But I was like, let me let me, let me me read it first, and then I'll do say whatever I have to say afterwards. And when I read the article, it, it, it made so much sense because if – I'm kind, and I'm, and I'm gonna say it too. I'm really glad Marvel doesn't own the rights for certain things for movies like this because we never would have gotten Guardians of the Galaxy if Marvel owned all their properties. We yeah. never would have had to think about movies like now they're thinking about making like Inhumans and Black Panther and Doctor Strange. We never would have gotten four Netflix shows of Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, and Daredevil. Like they never would have thought of that because they always would have banked on the money maker. All right, so one of the last things I want to go back to uh, and talk about is what do you uh, or what are your most looked forward to upcoming games? Oh man, Dragon Age Inquisition. Okay, yeah, that yes, definitely, very, very good choice. Oh my, I despite what people say, I love Dragon Age Two. 
mainly because that was the first one I started with. I I must I beat Dragon Age 2, and I was like, maybe I should go play the first one. And my friend's like, ah, you really shouldn't since you're so used to the second one, because the controls are completely different and it's so different. And which is actually really true because I started playing Mass Effect. I beat Mass Effect one. I'm playing Mass Effect two, and the controls. Great games. Oh yeah. Very good games. I'm I am loving Mass Effect so far. And he was totally right. I played Mass Effect 1, I'm like, okay, I'm so used to this, and I'm like, oh my god, I really wish they would improve on this stuff, and now I'm playing Mass Effect 2, and I'm like, oh my god, they listen to me! And so, <laughs> it's it's actually a really good point. Uh, however, they really, they should have never gotten, uh, or gotten rid of the the Land Rover thing, whatever it's called, and I Mass can't Effect drive 2, that uh, anymore? No, yeah, it's not drivable in the second one. All you do is scan planets instead. Oh my goodness, I like driving kind of, around random planets. I know, it, it kind of sucks that they did that, but... I, I At least in the third one, they they kind of added back in. What was it called, the Mako? I don't know, I didn't play it yet. I'm only up to two. Uh, well, no, I'm like, like, what was the Land Rover thing from the, the first one? I think it was Mako. Called? The Mako? Okay. I, it's been a long time since I played it, but that was actually one of the first games I ever played on the 360. And it blew my freaking mind. And I remember I beat it in a day. Um, the next day, went back and played it again, uh, almost completely through the second time, doing a bunch of different story mission like choices. Um, and I, I just Bioware has always had a soft spot in my heart, but they have not made too many good decisions lately. And I, I can't say that's completely their fault or completely EA's fault, um, but. It's somebody's fault. It's somebody. We can, we can point the finger and blame someone. That is how you're feeling exactly. right now. That's how I feel about Capcom. And okay. I feel like yeah, that please. is another show all in itself because I can yell about Capcom for days now. I feel kind of bad because, like you said, I focus now on comic books. And all my friends ask me how come I don't do gaming anymore. And I actually feel bad because I did Let's Plays because I loved to – talk while playing games. I love to make fun of games while playing them, and I guess I'll make it first on your channel because, you know, all that, but I definitely will confirm for you right now that I will be returning to Let's Plays. Awesome. There you go. I cannot guarantee a date because I do TV time with Mr. Dark Phoenix, and right. TV time this fall is going to have me very busy. Oh, it, it, have, because a lot of things are starting. Oh, yeah, I've got Arrow Season 3, The Flash Season 1, Aces of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Gotham, Constantine, and I still have to think of whether I'm going to review American Horror Story, Freak Show, The Originals, and maybe Supernatural Season 10. So I'm going to be a very busy TV person this, yeah. this season, but... I mean, me and my friends, have, and I asked them, like, well, don't tell me what I should do. What game should we play? You know, uh, my friend, because I want to, like I said, like you said, I want to do more couch plays. I want to play with my friends, you know, with more moldy stuff. So we may play games like Marvel Ultimate Alliance uh, 1 and 2, uh, like the arcade games. I want to have an arcade-style show on my channel. What I wanted to do was I wanted to make a separate Let's Play channel. And that's why I kind of wanted to wait because I wanted my channel to grow before making another channel. But I feel like I might just go for it because. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, one of the things that a lot of people do is uh, they'll, they'll kind of start growing um, some of that content on their original channel until they have a, a good install base of people who are following them for that. And then say, OK, well, if you want to watch this, you know, go ahead and check out uh, my, my gaming section on, on this other channel. That way, I can keep this one mainly for TV shows, comic books, stuff like that. But don't worry, because the other channels are going to have only gaming stuff just for you guys. Yeah, and that's exactly what... And, and when people ask me how come I didn't do gaming stuff, because... And even like when I got my new computer and I got my recording equipment and all that, for video games, I was like, I don't want to pollute my channel with like 10 uploads of a video game and then do five five of a TV show and then have them have no way to find them, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you, oversaturation is, can be very yeah. painful. And it's like, you know, they tell you to have, you know, uh, a regular upload of stuff, but I mean, like, for me, I don't want to, I don't want to overload people. Like, if I was watching you on YouTube if you and, and you and you let's play a game and you upload the entire thing in one day, I am, yeah. I am 
my mind is going to think of the future and I'm going to be like, no, I'm not watching this at all because I'm going to have to invest so much time in it and energy and just sitting there watching it. So I, I definitely want to have a bigger following on my channel first and then I will gladly go into gaming and once I get better equipment to do it, I definitely want to go back and finish a lot of games because I want to finish, I, I still haven't finished The Walking Dead yet. And I kind of very like very good game, that. and I I haven't even beaten it myself yet. Like I I want to I want everything to be fresh on my channel when I do it. My friend's beaten them, so I'm gonna have him with me for the let's play just because I don't want it to drag on. So he's yeah. gonna, so he's gonna like hit me and be like, no no no, go that way, go that way, or yeah, go that way. Okay okay, I'll do that. But I definitely will be going back to let's plays, and they will be a lot more fun because I'm gonna have a lot of my friends. And now that I finally learned how to do uh, picture in picture and video in video, I can make annotations to tell people to go to other videos and all that stuff. So uh, it's yeah. a first that I'm glad to confirm on your channel that I'm going to be going back to Let's Play soon. So do you have any final comments? Uh, anything that maybe I, I didn't ask or anything that uh, you just might say, hey, that's something I want to share? Well, I hope I'll be back. For future episodes this is really fun actually yeah and, and uh, I'll, I'll definitely be, I'll be glad to have you back man. and you know um, pretty much what I say at the end of most of my videos is um, always remember that through good times and bad times always remember to geek out and enjoy your lives there you go and uh, that is uh, our interview with the Mr. Dark Phoenix. Go check him out on YouTube. I will put a link in the description below, and I will also put an annotation on the video. That way you can click on it if you were lazy like me. Uh, one thing that I always say at most of my, the end of most of my videos is uh, tech up and game on. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Take care, everybody.